Welcome to Learning English with Captain Vinoy Varagal, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's College, the Epcot Court, Court, Kerala. I hope everybody is doing good. In the previous lectures, we have uh, studied some of the aspects of super, suprasegmental features. We know that suprasegmental features or prosodic features or secondary phonemes refers to different aspects that occur in connected speech. Say, we have uh, stress, intonation, pitch, juncture and rhythm as uh, suprasegmental features and uh, in the previous lectures we discussed what stress is. Stress is also known as accent and we know uh, the important 10 plus rules governing stress that is of course word stress where the primary stress falls where the secondary stress falls and uh, now that we have completely uh, discussed and understood the previous uh, concepts like uh, uh, stress, primary stress, secondary stress, different rules of word stress, of course we are moving forward to the next uh, area. Before moving to the next topic, uh, I wish to of course request you if you have any doubt regarding word stress primary stress, secondary word stress, etc. Please watch the previous video lectures in which I have very clearly explained the rules of word stress. So also I have explained the pronunciation of the plural suffix and of course the past tense suffix. So please go through those video lectures and understand what we mean by the suprasegmental features, so also what we mean by word stress and how different syllables of a polysyllabic word are articulated and of course come to the new video and learn it. It doesn't matter whether you learn this first and go to the previous ones later. Anyway, we just continue our discussion of the suprasegmental features and the next concept we discuss is what is known as intonation. Intonation. Today we have to understand what we mean by intonation. And uh, of course, intonation is very important in the very communication skills of each and every person. Intonation refers to significant changes of pitch and stress in relation to utterances or we can say that utterance bound pitch is called intonation. Utterance bound pitch is called intonation because we do not speak in the normal way all the time. Our mental disposition, our emotions and our purposes and of course uh, the way we want our listener to of course understand things all this is affecting or deciding the tune or tone we attribute to, we give to each and every utterances we make. So, intonation is important in uh, bringing out the real implications of speech. We have of course different implications, right? So, all the implications of speech is brought out by intonation and the most obvious role of intonation is to express our attitudes and emotion to show shock or surprise, pleasure or anger or of course interest or boredom or seriousness or sarcasm. Intonation establishes whether the speaker is questioning, agreeing, disagreeing, then expressing emotion etc. Okay, so as I said some time ago, we do not speak in the normal tone or tune. We have different emotions like we are sometimes boredom, we are sometimes tired, we are sometimes surprised and shocked and of course eager. So all these different 
emotions and moods and modes must be just conveyed through of course our speech or the sound that comes from inside so the way we express our attitudes inside our heart inside our brain inside of course our mind and what is inside us is of course shown or expressed through our speeches or our sounds and that particular tone or tune or sound the pitch variations like the rising and the falling and the, maybe the fall rise right so all that is indicated by intonation intonation all right turn into tune into pitch rises and falls into whatever we utter us so uh, so grammar of the sentence does not usually give any clues to the effect say for example we know that something is written in the present tense or the past tense or the future time we have of course different model auxiliaries to show time but the punctuation marks and uh, of course the grammar and the conventions of the language does not always or do not always help us in understanding or deciphering or even comprehending the very tone or tune or the purpose or the emotion somebody has. So intonation may act as a marker of personal or social identity. It's a marker, okay? So when I say, yeah, I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine, that is, of course, the real kind of feeling that I am, I'm really fine. But when I say, yeah, I'm fine, or rather, I'm fine, okay, we are, I'm fine, all right, uh, so the tone is differing, okay? So it could even be a doubt sometimes. I myself is doubtful whether I am fine, okay? All right, all that is, of course, uh, indicated by the tone or tune we use. So, it is, in fact, partly the characteristic intonation pattern that makes mothers sound like mothers, lawyers sound like lawyers, and, of course, police officers and military officers and teachers and priests, and, of course, we have uh, different people buying and selling and all. So all this kind of buying, selling, looking after the children, teaching, interrogating, especially interrogating criminals or convicts, right? All this is, of course, successfully done through the tone variations, right? And we have to understand the fact that we use intonation to distinguish close types such as questions and statements, right? We have different types of questions, right? Different types of sentences we have. Say, for example, we have statements, we have, of course, exclamations, we have, of course, uh, right, uh, commands, requests, we have uh, WH questions, yes or no questions, question tags, alternate questions. So, we have different types of grammatical functions. So all this has to be indicated through the utterances and the tone or the tune we give to the utterance is what is known as intonation, okay? And uh, two basic intonation types are the falling tune or what is known as the uh, falling intonation and the rising tune or the rising intonation and a pitch movement from low to uh, a higher pitch is of course known as the, um, a, a rising intonation and the pitch movement from of course a, a high position to a low position is what is known as falling intonation. So we have to understand the fact that we have uh, uh, three main intonation patterns or tunes and one is what is known as falling intonation okay falling intonation or which can even be called the falling tune okay and now we have of course the rising intonation which could even be called 
rising tune okay and there is one more intonation not just one more in fact there are many but uh, even native speakers find difficulty in showing and expressing and conveying all the many intonation tunes or patterns and when it comes to of course non-native speakers like people who learn English as a second language or who learn English later in their career or life okay it is very difficult for them to of course master all the many intonation tones or tunes or patterns so we will just understand one more tone intonation that is of course the four rise intonation four rise intonation okay so these are the three main intonations we have to be familiar with or we have to master so one is of course the falling intonation or falling tune number two is rising intonation or rising tune and number three is fall rise intonation which is also known as dive so the falling intonation a rising intonation for rise intonation or it's also called dive d-i-v-e dive all right so these are the three main intonation patterns there are others also but we don't have to learn because even native speakers find it difficult to master the intonation patterns especially other than these three the falling tune the rising tune and the fall rise or the dive so when we utter a, a, a word like yes with the pitch of the voice rising the pitch movement can be represented as of course uh, uh, this way okay it is we are uh, articulating with a rising okay we can say that it is just uh, going up the, the voice is going up right that is yes normally it can be uttered like that but of course we have other ways of marking intonation falling intonation rising intonation etc so this is in fact an introduction to what intonation is we have of course more lectures i'll be lecturing on these three intonation uh, tunes in three videos so that of course you understand it very clearly i'll be using enough examples as well so it would be very clear so this is an introduction to intonation okay now we are just summing up the concept of intonation and now we know what intonation is intonation is of course uh, attributing our mental emotional uh, feelings or emotions or different attitudes to of course the very words we speak like we do not speak in a normal way all the time the same way all the time we are happy we are upset we are worried we are tired we are of course eager to convey something we are in of course a desperate and disappointed mood sometimes so all these different modes or moods of uh, us is indicated through of course speech variations or uh, the rising or the falling of the sounds and all this rising and falling and fall rise is indicated through intonation okay so with this we come to the end of uh, the introduction on intonation patterns now in the next video we are discussing the first intonation pattern that's of course falling intonation thank you so much for listening may god bless you